Hello and welcome to another episode of Be the Love to Awaken Our Souls. Thank you again so much for tuning in this week. I am Stacy Musial. And I am Brenda Carey. We are your co-hosts and souls on the journey. And we are on a mission to raise the consciousness of humans and the planet. And we need your help. Please spread the word to your family and friends and join us every week. Consider becoming a Patreon supporter or a sponsor to help with the operating costs like editing and the many hours we spend creating these shows with quality guests and content. And if you have resonated with our mission, support us in a way that raises your vibration to love. And if it feels safe for you, I'd like to invite you to take a moment to get centered with us. I'd like to invite you to take a beautiful cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, releasing anything that is keeping you from being present. And take another deep breath in through your nose, breathing in calm, peaceful, loving energy and breathing out anything you're ready to release in this now moment. And take one more breath in through your nose, breathing in light and love for yourself. And imagine breathing that light and love and send it back to all of humanity, remembering that you always, always have your breath to come back to. I am excited about our topic. So Stacy just asked me before we hit the record button, because we are trying to come up with a topic and bounce around a whole bunch of different ideas. And finally, she's just like, well, what does be the love and awakening your soul mean to you? And my first word, or pretty close to my first word, (laughs) was presence. Like when I am fully present within myself, with other people, that I think is our greatest expression of love. When we are not preoccupied by all the things that we have to do on our to-do list, when I'm not thinking about, oh, well, maybe tomorrow I'll do this, or maybe I'm, you know, stuck somewhere in the past about, you know, shouldn't have done that because I'm shooting on myself, which is not a great idea. If I'm not even present with myself, that's not even showing love to myself. And then I'm not able to give that out authentically to the other people that I am with, whether that's family or friends or even the grocery store clerk. So really when I have to boil it down to just one thing to be love, I feel like in the present moment, that is truly where love can only exist. Mm. And that's where we're going today. What do you think, Stacy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Because, you know, this is actually this year that's been my word. And I started out this year with I wanted to develop this just deep presence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what does that mean for me? Because I, you know, it's being present, yes, with myself, and then with others, and with, you know, the experiences that I have. And when I can be fully present with that, I, I am more in tune with, with my body, and with my thoughts, with my, my sensations, with, you know, my behaviors, with, you know, any habits I have and, and really able to make a different choice from that place. But, you know, the, the important thing for me is to be, you know, as I'm present with myself, I can, you know, provide that for others because like, how often are you, when you're like talking to someone and, you know, they're, they get distracted or they're, you know, they're, they're not really present for you and they're not really listening to what you're saying. And you're like, you know, it, it, it feels like very frustrating because, you know, it, it's not giving you the, the time and attention that you deserve. And I think we are all so distractible and are, you know, we're, we're like off on all these different tangents in our minds that, you know, we're not able to be present for ourselves. And then how are we supposed to give that to somebody else? And we all are so deeply craving that we just don't know how to do that. And we haven't been really taught, you know, and then of course we're bombarded with all these messages, which, you know, it just 
keeps our minds just, you know, distracted in every direction. Right. And I think at the core of it all, like we all just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. We want to be listened to deeply without judgment, without shooting or criticism and for ourselves as well. But I think that's what people are really yearning for. I mean, as humans, we are designed to connect to one another, but that connection, at least when it comes from a place of love and compassion needs to be in that present moment. You know, and I think this is, I don't know, maybe this is a, a lost art in our culture because, I mean, I, I've done this myself, but oftentimes when someone is speaking to me, in my mind, I'm formulating what I'm going to say to them when they get done talking. And that is not being present at all. I've gotten better. I, I really have. And and I think that's one thing that we can just start with, like when someone is speaking to you, just, you know really absorb the words that they're saying, even if, even if you don't agree with all the things that they're saying. And I'm not saying that we have to be a doormat and then all of a sudden agree to, you know, all of their opinions, but to just receive them. Because I think so many people are yearning to be heard, to have someone, you know, to, to be that message board and listening board for them. And that's also been a challenge for me because I don't always have the same opinions um, as every person. And I'm, I'm sure that's true for you as well. Uh, but to be able to hold my own with my own thoughts and truths, but also listen to someone else that may not have, you know, that same exact uh, opinion as I do. I know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like we are living in a culture right now that has so many divisions, right? And so right. we are looking at, you know, extreme divisions where people, right. you know, really feel very strongly about their, you know, their stances and things. Yeah. And, and it's then, more about being right than it is about really caring. And I think that's what really concerns me. There's such just like, I have to be right at all costs. I hear that a lot. Yeah, I have to be right, but really what what are we defending, right? It's our right. it's our ego, right? Our ego is coming in the way, getting in the way and saying, "No, this is the way it is." But, you know, how does anybody really know? You know, I mean, there's so many there's so many different truths and sides in the world, right? And there's we we tend to think in this black and white you know, spectrum, um, either or, but there's like so much more duality or not do non-duality, you know, where we're like expansive. There's like so much, um, I want to say gray, but like, but what if it's all like, it's not just black and white, but what if it's like a multicolored dimensional, you know, way of thinking? It doesn't have to be gray. It can be like, sure. you know, a little purple and pink and blue. And, you know. <laughs> We're multidimensional beings. We so. are. So yeah, that totally makes sense. It doesn't so have to be gray. <laughs> <laughs> there's no like, <laughs> there's no, yeah, one way or uh, two ways, right? Or there's, but we, we tend to think that way in our culture and then our, our ego gets in the way and wants to defend that, right? And so right. The because, defense... because I think it's familiar. And so the reptilian brain latches on to what they, what, we think might be safe and familiar, what we've always known, not necessarily better, not necessarily better or for transformation of ourselves, but just it's what we know. And I think that can really keep us stuck. Yeah, it keeps us safe, right? If we do what we've always done, then we're going to, you know, going to feel safe, but then we're always going to get the results we've always gotten. And is that where we want to live in our lives? <laughs> I I'm, know I don't. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. What is it? Albert Einstein? Was he the one kind of, and I'm kind of roughly paraphrasing about if you keep doing the same thing, but expect a different result, that's insanity. Mm -hmm. And there's or, a lot of truth to that. <laughs> yeah. Or the other way is you can't change the, a, you know, a situation or a problem with the same way of thinking about it. Right. So we need to rise above that and really, you know, expand our consciousness, expand that. And how can we do that? 
we have to get present with these old belief systems and these old thoughts and question, question everything. I think if we don't start to question it, we're just taking in the same old bull, you know, that we've, (laughs) that we have always taken in, right? And, And we have to start thinking for ourselves. It is. And it's going to be uncomfortable at first. I remember when I started losing the the stories that I was creating while someone was talking and I would just look them in the eye and just be fully present. It actually wasn't that easy initially because I felt like, well, I, I probably, I, maybe I need to be doing something or thinking about something. It was really uncomfortable, but I think that's a good sign because when we start to push that comfort zone and expand, like we are, we are then evolving. If we keep, you know, again, doing what we've always done, we're going to get what we've always gotten. So I would definitely encourage listeners to, even if being present with someone is uncomfortable for you, good, like good on you. Like that's part of the growth uh, Mm -hmm. that, that will help transform. And so we, we have more than a, hopefully an eight second attention span or whatever the average is now, it seems really short. (laughs) Well, I think that's so true though. I mean, we have to like, you know, that uncomfortableness is part of that growth, but we have to sit in that uncomfortableness. So really, Mm -hmm. and that be, you know, being present with that feeling in the body, it might want to squirm, right? That's the ego. And I, when I say ego, I mean like that part of you that is trying to, you know, really um, take you away, distract you from what you're trying to do, right? Because the brain, the, you know, has created these neural networks, you know, so it's, it's trained to be distracted. And so when you retrain it to stay present, and you just, you know, work with that energy, right? Not against it, but work with it, you know, and, and lean into that uncomfortableness, it actually starts to get easier, you know, and then, then you're teaching your, you know, your ego, um, your, you know, that part of you that wants to distract easily, but Hey, it's okay. I can like, I can be in this energy and it's safe and it's, you know, and then it, that uncomfortableness starts to get a little less uncomfortable yeah, and a little great. bit more, sorry, go ahead. more comfortable to, to really stay present with yeah. yourself. I say it's breaking that addictive pattern of easily distraction, like, you know, the shiny object syndrome or squirrel and, you know, off to the, <laughs> off to the next thing. It, and the, the one thing that I found really helps me to be with that uncomfortableness is to breathe. Cause almost always, if I'm in that kind of edgy place of, I'm not really comfortable, but I'm trying to just edge out of it and be with it. I'm usually not breathing really deep. And so that's a very like underlying, my nervous system isn't quite settled. And so when I just draw awareness to my breath and just be in that present space with nice full breathing, it makes that transition easier. Um, That's been one of the things that I found really powerful. Yeah, yeah, the breath is is a very powerful, you know, tool that we have with us at all times. You know, we can always tap into that which, you know, is it's really about the intention behind that, right? Going into a conversation, even if you find yourself in a conversation that maybe turns difficult that you weren't expecting, you know, you always have your breath to come back to, you know, and and to but to really show up in these conversations or these you know, moments, these experiences, right? So experiences like being, you know, how many times you've been in an experience that, you know, you're like, oh, what's next, you know? And and it's like, let's be present with the experience we're in rather than waiting for the next thing to happen, right? We can, we can set the intention and say, I'm, you know, going to really stay focused, you know, even, you know, Oftentimes, like Brenda and I will will set an intention before, you know, we come on and and do a podcast, right? And we're we're very intentional about how we want to show up and be present and we want our words to come through, you know, in an articulate way and 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 just be in like a heart-centered place and you know and and feel that energy. And we and that's that's really how 
I live my life is like, you know, that intentional way. Anytime I'm going into a new experience or a new conversation, you know, is that I want to be fully present and I'm going to, you know, fully enjoy this and, and I'm going to come to a, from a place of love. And, and that's, you know, opening my, my heart in each interaction I have, because that's really important to me that, that people feel that because I want my love to shine through um, because a lot of, you know, because people aren't used to that. We're not used to feeling, you know, heard and, and valued and, and listened to. So right, And respected. Yeah. For, mm-hmm. I totally agree. I do start every morning with an intention. I have an intention for the year, my son Culpa. And mm-hmm. then each day or each week brings another nuance to that. And it also makes me very aware of when I'm not being intentional. And I think this is also key too, because even for the best of us who may have been meditating for a while or have really practiced presence, there are those little dopamine hits that come in there. And I, I'm going to share a quick story. Uh, I have a, a women's wellness group and part of our month was doing a mental cleanse. And so for me, being a part, we all chose something different. But for me, I decided to take the social media apps off of my phone. Um, I can't totally eliminate them because I do use them for work. That's how we promote the podcast and and my business. Uh, But I said, well, I'm not going to get distracted on my phone. If I really need to, I'll go on my desktop and I'll access it that way. And so sure enough, the next day I I took the social media apps off my phone. And the next day, driving my daughter to school and we're um, waiting actually to the bus stop and we're waiting there and we've got a few minutes to wait. And total autopilot, not even in my conscious mind, pull out my phone, flip to the screen where my social media apps were, but they're not anymore. And I'm looking at my screen going, oh, that's right. I (laughs) I took them off. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm looking over the passenger seat where my teenage daughter is. And she's looking back at me, like expecting me to check my social media. And I put my phone you know, back in my purse. And we ended up having this lovely, just probably about five minute conversation before the bus came. Mm. And I was like, that's what I would have missed. Mm. I would have missed those just sweet little five minutes. Mm. My teenage daughter actually really felt like talking to me. I will take those moments as I can now because <laughs> mm. I don't know how long they'll last. But I had those five minutes of just full presence with her. Mm. And it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't aware that my not subconscious, you know, flipping to my social media apps was preventing me Mm -hmm. from being present. Uh, So just something to take in, like where are areas where, you know, you could be just a little bit more present and it might be social media, it might be something else, but that could really like hone in and connect with someone and yeah, and be that love that we want to emulate out into the world. Hmm. I love that. I mean, seriously, like how much time do we spend on social media and how much is it really distracting us from having these deep, true conversations that, you know, we can have with the real people that are sitting next to us? Literally. You know, like how often, you know, do you go into a restaurant and see like, you know, everyone on their phone or, you know, couples sitting across from each other, you know, and, and they're, you know, with friends and, you know, it, it's just like, it's how our, our society has been wired, you know, and, and, you know, we, but we do get that, those dopamine hits every time we, you know, get a like, or, you know, it, it, it's an addiction. It really is an addiction. And so, but, you know, we can step back and, and take, you know, ownership of that, and I love yeah. that, you know, taking that mental cleanse, you know, off the social media. And, yeah. and I, I would say as like an addendum. So this was a couple months now. I did put my social media apps back on my phone. However, I will say that I am more intentional now of like before I hit the button, I'm like, okay, what am I searching for? And you know, is there something that I really do need to find via these, the social platform? 
or am I bored or am I looking for another kind of connection? So at least I feel like I am now more intentional of when I do decide to engage. Because again, it's not black and white. I don't think social media is evil by any means. I actually think it can be a powerful way to communicate or meet people I I wouldn't have, get to. Um, but it's again, it's coming back to being present and even even with the tools that we use. Yeah, you know, I mean, media, social media, media, you know, it all plays a part in how what we're viewing and and because we're, you know, seeing these images at such a rapid rate, um, you know, it, and our brains can't keep up, you know, and I have my whole theories around this and like ADHD and <laughs> everything like video games, yeah. you know, um, but, you know, one thing I, I've noticed, um, you know, and I'll go through phases sometimes where I'll get, you know, um, I'll have this downtime and um, I want to, you know, maybe zone out on on Netflix or something right and so I might ha- watch like a show or something and I, I got into this series back in I think January and I hadn't watched any any Netflix in months um because I don't really but it was like you know the cold season here and it was you know it just felt what I like I wanted to do in that moment and um and so but I noticed though that my thoughts were you know, getting more anxious. And, and even though it seemed like a, a, you know, decent show, I realized that it was like, I had these anxious thoughts and they were ruminating a little bit more. And I was having weird dreams and, you know, all of these things that were happening. So, cause I, I realized that this you know, was the only different thing that I had been doing in my life. And so I stopped watching it. And so I haven't watched anything um, since January. And, um, and then I, everything went back to normal and I was able to get more focused on my thoughts and stay more present with myself. And my, you know, I had, you know, my anxiety went away. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when we when we're experiencing something like that, we don't really know how it's impacting us until we take it away. And so I think it, it's really important to question the things that we're taking in in our lives and how it's really affecting us because all these pieces of information are constantly coming at us. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I, I do think that the the TV shows and and the media that we watch can very subtly influence our minds. And and it may not be a particularly, you know, violent show or suspenseful show, but it does keep the mind engaged and active. And even on a very low level, and especially at night when a lot of, I think most people, that's when they, that's like, that's how they wind down is like they'll watch TV before bed. And I, I really question that. I actually don't think it's wind down. It's Mm -hmm. wind down time at all because my, my mind is still working and our eyes are still receiving the blue light, which keeps the brain awake. So I would, you know, really sort of question like is watching TV as a habitual wind down activity at night? Is that really serving is that really serving us? Are we really being present with ourselves? For me, it's a definite no. I've just had to cut out, I've had to cut out TV at least a couple hours before bedtime. And honestly, the addiction has really gone away. I have a beautiful evening practice that I would rather do instead. Mm -hmm. So, um, hopefully that's an encouragement to anyone who thinks that they have to have their Netflix (laughs) before bed. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I agree because before bed, that, that is a vital time. Like you're, you're soaking in all that information It's affecting your energy. Um, and as an empath myself, like, you know, I, I, I don't watch any scary movies. I don't watch I don't any either. violence. I can't, I can't watch anything that's like, you know, going to impact my energy because, you know, the, um, the body is, you know, takes that in on a vicarious you know, it's like vicarious trauma, like your body doesn't know the difference between real or imagined. So you're, you're taking that in. And of course, it's going to affect how present we are, you know, in, in our, our lives and within ourselves, because it's affecting our brain and our, our energy field. 
And so then it's hard to decide, you know, is this mine or is this, you know, what am I really afraid of if we've never taken a, a media break or never, you know, taken a TV break? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, as, as a wrap up, if you are listening to this episode and you have really resonated with what we're talking about, let us know, like, what practices do you use to stay present? And what are your thoughts on our society in terms of how present we are and how we can be more present to one another so we can spread the love? Thank you for listening to Be The Love Podcast. And if you have enjoyed listening to our show, please share the love by sharing it with your family and friends, giving us a five-star written review on iTunes or Spotify, and liking us on Facebook. And if you haven't heard, we are so excited to announce the Awaken Your Soul Costa Rica Retreat, November 6th through the 12th, 2023. We would absolutely love to have you join us for a beautiful and vibration-raising experience. Check out the webpage with details and registration in the show notes. I'm Brenda Carey, and as a holistic healer, I offer coaching and online programs to guide people in their sacred path to vibrant health. My website is sacredpathyogaandreiki.com. Check it out in the show notes. And I'm Stacey Musial. I'm a psychotherapist specializing in whole person, deep soul healing. You can find out more about my work, my book, and programs at awakenyourempoweredsoul.com. You can check out our links in the show notes. And please consider supporting our mission to awaken our souls with a monthly donation that helps us with the operating costs of this podcast so we can continue to spread the love. To contribute, visit our Patreon website at patreon.com forward slash be the love podcast and stay tuned for more episodes being released on Mondays at 5.55 a.m. Mountain Time.